Mars may be the next frontier for foodies, but it's not going to be the first time that humans have cooked in a place other than Earth. Astronauts have been cooking and preparing food in space for decades, and their tools and techniques will help shape the way we cook on Mars. So today, we're going to take a look at the history of the NASA food program. I'm Sarah Gilbert, and this is the Martian Street Food Society. Mars is going to present a number of challenges, but in a lot of ways, it'll actually be easier than cooking in space. For one thing, we'll have gravity again, even if it's not as strong as it is on Earth. And for another, we won't have the same restrictive space constraints. Being able to build and design kitchens that are slightly larger will give us a lot more flexibility. I'm Audrey Glasgow. I'm the collections manager and registrar for the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, which means I manage the museum and archive collections. On Mars, it's going to be it's going to be a very different food situation than than anything that we have now living in space. Living in space now is living in microgravity. Um, it is you know adapting to a totally different environment. Living on Mars is still going to be a totally different environment, but a lot a lot of things that we have had to learn to adapt with in living in space, I don't aren't going to be as big of issues then because we're going to have gravity because we're going to have walls. And, you know, every wall isn't going to have to be equipment and electronics and controls. Uh, you know, you could, you could theoretically have a galley that was entirely sealed off just like our kitchens are. If I spray a water bottle in my kitchen, nothing is going to, like, fry. Um, and if we're building on Mars, you could theoretically have that. So eating, I think, is going to be – we're going to learn from eating and in, in living in space, but it, it'll still be very different to anything we're experiencing on the ISS. Martian colonists will need to bring food with them from Earth, at least initially. And in order for that food to survive the trip, NASA already has some pretty strict requirements in place. The figure that I found was that food, the food being sent for people to eat for the Mars mission will have to have a shelf life of five years, which is a really long shelf life. Um, and it'll have to be sent ahead of the people who are traveling to Mars. Um, for weight and capacity reasons. And so dehydration re, uh, dehydration or freeze drying might be a really good option for, for making it last that long. The first foods eaten in space were various kinds of pastes, like meat pastes. The astronauts squeezed them directly out of a tube that looked kind of like a toothpaste tube, and they required no prep on the part of the astronauts, which is good because they had no space to prep food in. Those capsules were barely big enough for a person, let alone a kitchen. So at what point did shuttle design change to allow for space for a kitchen? So the first real kitchen galley uh, was on Skylab. And Skylab was much more like a home rather than a vehicle for getting from one point to another. And so they gave them a table where they could sit down with their tray of food and it would Velcro down. They could hold themselves into their seats with, stra with uh, like foot straps. And, and they could eat together and cook their food together. And that was really the first time they had what we would think of as a kitchen. They've always had a place to prepare your food. You have to have a port to put it in. But that was the first time it would have looked recognizable as like a kitchen and dining room for most of us. Early menus for astronauts were pretty rigid, with every meal for every day for every astronaut laid out in advance. But as the missions got longer, those astronauts got pretty tired of not being able to choose their own food for the day. So in response, NASA rolled out the pantry. It seems like a pretty simple innovation, but it's crucial to making long space flights, just like the one to Mars, actually enjoyable. As the missions got longer and as our space and the spacecraft got bigger, they get more and more space and more and more choices. Um, so actually in Apollo, they got for the first time a pantry of items that wasn't assigned to anybody. They could just take a snack um, from it. And that was a limited pantry. Now the on ISS, the pantry is pretty extensive. They have soups and drinks and snacks and people can trade out their food rations for those. And so there's still a limitation on weight, but I think it probably feels a lot less limiting um, just because they have so much more flexibility and they have these extra assigned or unassigned, sorry, um, food rations. And that pantry isn't just limited to snacks. It also includes ingredients, which means for the first time, astronauts can now cook some meals completely from scratch. So has that innovation actually helped the astronauts enjoy eating more? 
So yes, absolutely. Uh, there has definitely been a shift towards allowing astronauts to have more flexibility with their food um, and to like actually enjoy making food in space. There's a really cool video, um, which I believe is NASA, so you can probably link it, of astronauts having a pizza making party. That's amazing. On ISS. It's awesome. It's amazing. They like flizz, frisbee them through the air and they swap and share pieces all around this table in the gallery and, and the galley. And it's, it's really neat. So they definitely let them do that. They also have in the pantry and ISS now they have tortillas and bread and um, like fruit. They can also use the food that they've grown, um, even though it's a very small amount to, to make like a crunchy piece of lettuce on your sandwich. Um, and so there's definitely been a, a real shift towards letting them feel like they have more control over their food. Um, and I think I, they seem to be really enjoying it. Their videos at least are totally amazing. Pizza is a great food to make in zero G for a couple of reasons. Number one, the ingredients stick to each other. If you've ever seen videos of astronauts cooking in space, you may have noticed them take tortillas and smear them with peanut butter or avocado or hummus and then stick the rest of the ingredients right on. It's a great way to make sure your sandwich guts don't go flying out into the space station. Pizza is also good for another reason the ingredients don't tend to form crumbs. Now crumbs may not seem like that big of a deal to you, but they were actually a huge issue, particularly in early space flight. The crumbs that formed from bread products could break off, float through the atmosphere and get stuck in the machines, possibly damaging multi-million dollar pieces of equipment. In fact, even today, the bread products that they eat are not the kind of bread that you could buy at your average supermarket. They, everything that goes up has to be, has to have a shelf life, um, and it has to fit within the safety rules, which include not having a lot of little crumbs that get everywhere. Um, obviously there's, there's, I think, less of a risk if a little bit of something gets out now than say if they were in a Gemini capsule where it's six inches from where you're eating to the nearest, you know, piece of equipment that could be really damaged. Um, but they also have specially formulated foods. So they are fresh tortillas and they do have bread, but it's not like you wouldn't buy it at Publix. It would be um, something that NASA or a commercial scientist has created and gone through the safety check process to make sure that it's not going to make a bunch of crumbs or that it's not going to go moldy and introduce mold into the system there. Often tortillas are one of the items that are brought up in their personal bag, in their like personal bag of personal food that they get to request from um, non-NASA. It still has to go through the same safety checks, but it it isn't the NASA issued tortilla. And the little bit said that um, it was because NASA NASA's um, amount of tortilla per serving of tortilla is one. And so they often ask for more because who wants to just have like one taco? In order to be safe for space flight, most foods have to go through one of four processes first. Freeze drying, thermostabilization, dehydration, or irradiation. Now all of these processes dramatically extend the lifespan of the food, and it also keeps things like bacteria from getting in. Freeze dried food is something that um, is where all the water is taken out of it. So it's quickly frozen then put into a vacuum and all the water is sublimated out of it. So that means it goes straight from a solid into a vapor and it just immediately leaves the food, which leaves all the natural oils. It doesn't change the flavor significantly. It's, um, and it takes all the water out. So it's much more lightweight and it lasts for a really long time. A lot of foods are thermostabilized and that is actually from army rations. That's how a lot of army rations are done. Um, so that food is that it's, it's the food that you recognize. Uh, for example, Apollo 8 ate Christmas dinner that was turkey and gravy and cranberry sauce that was thermostabilized. Uh, so they could eat it with a spoon instead of, um, you know, dehydrated and then rehydrated in the spacecraft. Um, there's also dehydrated, which is something that's been dried, but not in the same way as freeze drying. So it hasn't, the water hasn't been sublimated out of it. It was a, it was a liquid and then it evaporated from it. And then irradiated uh, is the other way of preserving food. And that's just to kill everything in it. Um, and what I mostly came across that said it was irradiated was meat. And that was just to, so that it preserved texture, but it killed everything in it so it didn't grow bacteria. Now, you may have noticed that two of those techniques removed water, leaving the food dry and hard and pretty difficult to eat. 
to add that water back in, space kitchens, and likely Martian kitchens, need an extra tool in their arsenal, the water gun. So in Mercury and Gemini, uh, they had a cold water gun, um, or cold water dispenser. And in Apollo, they first introduced that they could have hot and cold. Um, so they got to, to have like hot pasta instead of cold rehydrated pasta. Um, and they still do use dehydrated foods and rehydrated them with this water gun, essentially, um, on the ISS. The water gun um, interfaces with the pouch through like a septum adapter. And so after the food's inserted, there's a septum in the pouch and the pouch is vacuum sealed. And there's a septum adapter and then that adapts to the straw for the water gun and for other, for items that you're gonna suck through a straw, it adapts to the straw for the astronaut. It's dehydrated, it's, you know, crunchy dehydrated food in a little pouch. Pouch. They plug it into this adapter. So they plug the little septum adapter into the water gun straw. Um, and that fills the pouch with the correct amount of water. And then they have to rub it around so that everything gets hydrated. Um, and then they have to let it sit to rehydrate. Some things take a lot longer and some things don't take very much time at all. Um, it really depends on the dish, but it is, it is a really kind of funny process. And then by the time that it has uh, fully rehydrated, it should be viscous enough that it won't float away. And then they can cut it open with scissors to eat it with a fork or a spoon. All that processed food doesn't exactly sound too appetizing, so the astronauts have come up with a number of ways to modify it slightly to make it seem more like real food that you would get from home. They have these options to make like, take the rations that are dehydrated or that are uh, thermostabilized and make them feel more like a meal with foods that we're familiar with that add a bite or something you can hold or something fun. And while we're on the subject of space cuisine, how do you make a menu for an astronaut? Well, we know that it has to have stronger flavors. We know that nutrition is important, obviously. And we know that it can't cause crumbs, but what other factors are there? So um, it's based on both nutrition and on preference. So astronauts now, um, at least American astronauts now, uh, sit down with a menu of 200 plus items and do taste testing. And then they rank all these items based on what they like. Um, then the uh, mass nutritionists develop menus that make sure that they get all the nutrients they need, they get all the calories that they need, um, and then they get things that they like. They get snacks, they get M&Ms, they get, you know, um, whatever their, their favorite thing on the menu is, they make sure that they, they get things that are gonna make them happy because space is their home and, and it's not just about survival. And then once they're in the space station, they trade, which is really funny to me, is really interesting. Um, so one of the astronauts that I got to talk to as, as part of another project was telling me that they really like to trade for um, like international foods with other astronauts while they're up there. So usually only about 50% of the food that goes up is American NASA food, and the rest of it comes from whatever other countries, uh, space agencies have sent up their astronauts. Um, and so, they might be able to trade for, um, for example, one of one of the one of the items that I came across was a Korean astronaut, and he brought up specially stabilized kimchi. Um, and I just think that's amazing because kimchi is the best. And um, so, so they have they have this these other options that they can trade with, um, and that's actually been happening since all the way back to Apollo Soyuz, uh, where American astronauts tried uh, the borscht and uh, some of the other Russian rations that came up with them. So what are our takeaways? One, when designing menus for the Martian colonists, the flexibility to pick their own meals might be the most important thing. Two, because most of this food will have to be shipped to Mars in advance, Martian chefs are gonna have to be pretty creative with how they make processed food taste good. And three, even though we have decades of experience cooking in space, cooking on Mars might be a lot easier. So if you got to pick one food to take with you to space, what would it be? Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Astronaut ice cream has never been eaten in space.